What's up bros and welcome to another BroGraph tutorial. I'm Dave Koss and today we're going to be learning how to make an iris for a camera that actually moves with one slider and there's going to be a little bit of MoGraph in there and there's going to be a little bit of Espresso. This is actually a good introduction to Espresso if you haven't done it before. So I have put in the assets which you can get on the website uh, an iris uh, PNG. There are four different types of irises here but we're going to do the one on the top left. Now if you are using Cinema 4D go ahead and start a project. I'm going to do the same. And I'm going to go ahead and put my regular settings in. You can do it however you want but I like to do HD with anti-aliasing set at best. And this reference image uh, that's available on the site is called iris.png and if you drag that into your materials window in cinema it will ask you if you want to create a copy at the location where your textures are saved hit yes then create a plane with a negative z orientation throw that texture onto the plane and then we don't have the aspect ratio right. The texture is 800 by 600, but our plane doesn't have the same aspect. So I'm going to type 800 by 600 into the width and height of this plane. Scale it down a little bit here. I'm also going to turn off specular. This object, we don't want to see that. Now, in order to draw on top of it, uh, in our side view, we'll need it to be back on x-axis just a little bit so whatever we're doing appears on top. In the front view change your display to any sort of shading where you can actually see your reference image. If you click on your reference image material down here and go to the editor you can change the texture preview size I'd say do about um, one megabyte which is 512 by 512. Now zoom in and we're going to create this piece right here. And if you go to Spline Bezier, you can start drawing. Now this doesn't have to be 100% perfect. And the reason for that is because this isn't a real camera. We're just creating art here. I say that a lot to people. Sometimes it doesn't have to be perfect because it's art and probably nobody else is going to notice except for you. So, we've got this set. I'm going to move this one point. because I didn't quite get that right. Change this up just a little bit. And that is close enough for what we're doing. Alright, the spline that you just made, you want to adjust the pivot point because that's what this hole is for right here on a real camera that's where it pivots uh, when you take a picture. So if you're in object selection mode, you change your uh, axis by clicking enable axis modification and it's way out in left field or something. Yeah, it's way out there. We want to move this pivot point to up there where that dot is. So you just click and drag it And there you go. Turn off the plane and that's pretty much the shape we're going to be working with here. There's not much more you actually have to model. So with the spline selected uh, we're going to go uh, to the MoGraph tab or menu and we're going to make a cloner object. Make the spline a child of the cloner object. I'm going to hit S so I can see what I'm doing here. All right, so there's three by default. What we need to do is make it five because there were five pieces inside of this right here. Now they're not radial. We need to change the mode here to radial. Now move the entire cloner object over here so you can kind of reference this. Now, the trick here is to just slowly adjust uh, a couple 
parameters until this kind of lines up. The first parameter would be radius. The second parameter would be offset. And then the third parameter we would go to transform and we would change rotation B. So you can see these are kind of in the right position now, but we have to do some more adjusting over here. We have to bring the radius in, change the offset. We're slowly bringing these into place and figuring out where they need to go. A little more right here. And now I'm going to go to um, transform and I'm going to rotate. You can see how this how this works, just little bits at a time. To get it right where you want it. I need to come in on my radius, but that's pretty close to what I want right there. So I'm going to turn off this reference plane, and you can see what we got here. We want to extrude this. So um, we're going to add an extrude object, put the cloner under the extrude object. Now notice it only extrudes one thing. That's because under the object tab for your extrude, you need to have hierarchical on so that they all extrude. The other thing we're going to do, if you'll uh, take a look at this, I'm um, in front view. Let's go back to perspective view. Uh, we need to change the the center point for this because that doesn't work. Um, your spline has its own pivot point. The cloner has a pivot point in the middle and extrude is just off in the middle of nowhere so click your cloner object. Shift C for search for tool for a command and type uh, center parent 2. Centering the parent to the cloner object and when you click on that extrude I'm sorry uh, centering to the cloner to its parent object which is the extrude object you can see now that the pivot point here is in the middle so the next thing we'll do is go to the object tab of extrude here and change this to uh, like point three um, these pieces inside of this shutter would actually be really thin, but they might have kind of a bevel. I would do the start and end fillet caps with one step, but make the radius something like 0.2, something really small. Let's just see what we get right here is kind of this, this triple edge. So it's a really thin piece of metal. The next thing that we want to do is create the lens that it's going to be inside of. And we're going to do that by creating a tube shape that is oriented on negative Z. And to get it right in the middle, we're just going to do a search with Shift C for transfer. And move your pointer to the middle here and click. And it moves that ring straight lined up there with the uh, center pivot of that cloner object. Now in the tube we'll do the outer radius somewhere around here so we kinda got this tube with the pieces sticking out. Now if you go back to your front view this is where you kinda set the the ring and I like to set the ring rather than trying to go set the uh, pieces of the, the iris because it's just easier to do this way. If you go to your cloner object and you go to transform and you rotate, you'll get to a point where you just about have a circle. This is the open point when you're taking a picture. Now take the tube and scale it down. So now it fits perfect. You got a perfect circle right here. And if you go back to your cloner, you can take a little snapshot by changing the rotation. 
and it gives it that nice look. With uh, the tube off, go to your right view and take a look. You just see one piece right here. So what's happening is all of these pieces, when you close them, they're coming together as one piece. They're going through each other. That's not what an iris does. They're all offset just a bit. So create an effector. Click on your cloner object because you want this cloner to have this effector that you're creating. Go to MoGraph Effector and create a step effector. Now by default it does something we don't want at all. So go to your step effector and parameter and turn off scale. We're not scaling anything. We're stepping the position. So you turn on position. Um, if you adjust Z that's that's what we want. See how these pieces start to push away from each other. But we don't want them to be this far. We want them to be just barely off of each other. Easiest way to do that is to go to your any side view, in this case the right view. I'm going to change to some sort of shading so I can see this. Now what happens here is they're not even. See this one here, it's running into this one and these aren't evenly spaced. That is because on this effector tab we kind of have a spline step thing going on here. We want these to be perfect increments. So if you right click on your point on your spline and you say 0x tangent, same thing on your end, 0x tangent. Oh, I'm sorry, I guess that's 0y. I guess I didn't select it. 0x tangent on both of these. See, you have a perfect straight line. There's no Bezier handles or anything. And what happens here is these pieces become perfectly spaced. We want them to basically be touching each other. So under parameters, we'll take this down to, I'm doing negative three. But they're all just slightly touching or maybe even off a little bit, but they are not inside of each other. So if you go back to your cloner object and move your transform, it takes the picture and none of these collide anymore. You can see what's going on in the inside there. So you want a nice uh, little controller to control this because it's a lot easier to keyframe, especially if you're using it a lot. And in order to do this, we're going to learn a little bit of Expresso, but don't get too excited because it's not that much. Go to your cloner, open your shutter a little bit so we can see what's going on here. Turn your tube back on so we can kind of see what our camera is going to look like. and create a null. Create menu, object, null. Once you get that null here, call it iris. And we're going to go to tags, Cinema 4D, and click Expresso. Easy enough. Now you get this blank canvas here and we're going to set that aside for a minute. When you have a null object, there is a menu up here called user data. And if you click on that, you can add some user data. And it's kind of like blank user data right now. We're going to call this, um, let's call this shutter. Because this is kind of like control of the shutter of a camera. So under data type, we're going to leave that at float. Under interface, we're going to do a float slider and under unit we're going to do degrees. We're going to turn on slider minimum and maximum and that's all we're going to do right now. We're going to hit OK. It's put that little thing down here and we have our, our degrees that we can mark. Now we want this to control what's going on in here. So the way that we do that is we go back to our Expresso editor. If you closed it by accident you can just click on the Expresso tab, double click, and it will open back up. Now you got two things right here that are going to be involved in your control. There's the user data that you just made, that's your slider, and then there's that rotation that comes from your cloner that was actually controlling the rotation of those metal pieces inside the iris. So drag 
iris null into the Expresso Editor. Okay, grab the cloner object and do the same thing. So these are the two you're working with, and you want this one to control this one. You want that slider here to control that rotation here. So on the output of your iris, you're going to go find that user data shutter. Then your input, the blue one here, on your cloner object. Now look where we were. If you go to cloner, you're in the transform tab, and you're controlling the degrees right here. That's what we're looking for over here. We're going to go to transform rotation and rotation B and then all we got to do is drag from one to the other and now those two parameters are attached I'm gonna make this smaller you kinda of have the same controls in here that you do when you're navigating uh, in your viewer I'm gonna leave that up here for a second now we want to have control with the shutter we want to set these values so click on your iris and you'll see the shutter is set at zero and it's closed. We want to adjust this a little bit. So if you click user data on the null and manage user data for the shutter. Now when we drag that slider, what happens? It opens, but it opens way too far and it keeps going all the way back around. So we only want it to go to 54 degrees in this case, as soon as you can't see it anymore. So that's the maximum that we want it to go. So in this data right here, with 57 being our maximum, we'll actually type in the max and the slider max to 57. That way, it's only open and close. That's it. And that's really simple Expresso. Um, but it gives you that control, and you don't have to worry about how far it's going. You can just keyframe you know, one extreme or the other. And if we bring the shutter out here by dragging this into the viewport. We have the slider available in the viewport which is nice. So if we're at frame 0 and we set a keyframe on the iris close like right here this is going to be a fast shutter so I'm going to do 10 frames and then I'm going to open it all the way. Keyframe it again by holding down command and pressing that dot and then we want to close it again in another 10 frames so we'll go to 20 frames bring this back down and keyframe it so if I hit play opens and shuts now usually it would open and shut a lot faster than that but for this case we're gonna leave it at that just for animation purposes I'm gonna make a default black texture and throw it on the cloner object so it's black like a iris would be a shutter and the other thing is now we got all these pieces on the outside now if you're building a camera around it you're not going to want these sticking into things and the way that you fix that is by making this a boolean so go to your front view create a full on cylinder with negative Z orientation. You want to center it up with these two objects. So again, Shift C, transfer. Find that center point, which apparently I did not find. Let me try that one more time. Transfer. There we go. So we've transferred a cylinder into the middle of this and on the front view if you turn on your tube and your cylinder you can line the two of them up. 
Now you want the outer radius of this cylinder that you made to be in between the two rings of the tube. And let me switch back to a wireframe view so you can see what's going on. So there is the tube. Go right in the middle here. Now we're doing this because this cylinder is going to act kind of like a, a cutout for this bowl. So we've got the cylinder and then we've got the extrude object of the iris. Create a bool object and the cylinder will go in the bool and your iris will go in the bool. Now this is backwards, this isn't what we want here. So in the bool, it's not A subtract B, I believe it's, yeah, it's A intersect B. So all the stuff on the outside we don't see anymore. So we got this tube and it's got the different pieces of the iris all in there. Uh, something else you can do if you want to keep your slider up at all times, click on the null object, the iris shutter. And if you right click on it, you can say show always. That way when you click off of it, it's still up here as an HUD. And then moving it right there, it looks pretty good. It's pretty good, I guess. And that's pretty much it. You got to build a camera around it, but hey, that's a good start. And it's a good introduction to doing cloner objects, a little bit of effectors, and espresso. So if you uh, if you do that, I'd love to see um, examples of, of what you did. And maybe if you took it a step further, I'd love to see that as well. You can post it on our Facebook page. You can uh, hit us up there or on Twitter. Uh, it's BroGraph and BroGraph.com. You can get all the other tutorials. Uh, if you are on the Facebook page, go ahead and like us and you'll get all the updates from the tutorials we do as they come in. And that is pretty much it, bros. So until next time, I'm Dave Koss, and thanks for watching.